Three games left in the 2023 college football regular season. The Oklahoma Sooners, they kind of have a thin margin for error. We'll talk about that. Talk about so much more on today's episode of Locked On Sooners. You are Locked On Sooners, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma Sooners. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Sooner Nation? Welcome to Locked On Sooners, and thank you for making Locked On Sooners your first listen every single day. We're free and available on all podcast platforms and on YouTube. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy over at prizepicks.com. My name is John Williams. You can follow me on Twitter at John Nine Williams. My buddy here is Josh Helmer. You can follow him on Twitter at Josh on Ref. You can also hear him Monday through Friday from nine to noon on the KRF Sports app. Josh, Brent Venables. I love listening to this guy speak because I feel like he's willing to be a little bit more transparent than maybe some other coaches are across the country and, and not as transparent as people would love a head coach to be, because I think everybody would love the head coach to be a hundred percent honest. And, and, but just listening to him talk, it just seems like he has a really good understanding of football, his team. I always kind of learn a little bit whenever I listen to him speak. So It's interesting, though, when you talk about what Oklahoma has struggled with the last two games in their losses to Kansas and Oklahoma State. Brent Venable spoke about that um, during his weekly media availability. And here's what he had to say. And I say that, man, it's, you got, you know, all these, this list of all these things you got to get better at and, uh, and that you're working on constantly. I always, I, when I watch film, when I watch practice, I see what the bad stuff is because I feel like that's what the opponent's always looking at. And even if you don't get exposed, I'm like, there, we're, we're going to get, we're going to get annihilated right here. You know, uh, you know, we don't have a post player, you know, they're going to see that. And, and that's that's what our job is to do, you know, uh, as coaches, is to always be on guard and uh, and have a plan on how to try to fix things. And, uh, and some things are a little bit easier than others, and some of it's developing, continuing to develop in your personnel, you know, where they where they might be weak, and uh, and that never happens fast enough. But uh, you know, that's that's the name of the game, you know. I, I, I make it, you know, pretty simple. Again, we've we've been really good. <laughs> at forcing turnovers this year and protecting the ball. Here in the, in the last couple of weeks, not so good. Uh, we're first in the conference, you know, top 10 in the country in, in uh, you know, turnover points differential. Uh, but in the last couple of weeks, you know, we've been punished. Which is a lot of what you and I have been talking about right here and probably you, me, and everybody else, right, in uh, Soonerland has been talking about OU's not been – well, they they are still leading the country uh, or tops in the Big 12. They were leading the country. They're tops in the Big 12. They're right there toward the top of uh, a lot of the national numbers in terms of points off of turnovers. But the last three games, not been as good, and it's, uh, it's cost you. This entirety of this conversation was, by the way, uh, prefaced by Garen Emig asking, okay, seems like the margins for this team, Brent, are still pretty thin for Oklahoma in 2023, which – think everybody would kind of agree with that, right? I mean, obviously, you've played several close games. You'd finally look like you were turning the corner on those close games until, obviously, Kansas and Oklahoma State. And anyways, Britt Vittables opened talking about the thin margins with something that was pretty interesting within this, John, that I think is going to allow you and I and probably everybody else to get to be online detective a little bit. But here was Brent Vittable's response talking about, hey, it seems like it's thin margins still, Brent. When you lose, uh, or certainly their turnovers enhance your opportunity to lose, now every now all these other warts can be exposed. And uh, that's just not at Oklahoma. It's, it's just football. And, you know, we, we don't – we don't have our head in the sand of what those might be, and uh, we may not uh, get the result that we want or everybody else wants as fast as everybody might want, but we're, uh, we recognize whatever those are. We understand our, where our weaknesses are better than anybody else, and uh, you know, I'm not going to talk about it right now, but we, we got a, uh, an area on our team that, man, we have to get better 
and it, if we don't, you know, again, and it's and it it's uh, it's been a, a part of not playing quite as well as we need to. And uh, is, that, is that physical or mental? Oh uh, no, it's a just position, just developing, just developing a position. So he, for anybody that's going to immediately jump in and think, okay, he's talking about the play call, he's talking about Jeff Levy. He says no, it's a position that we we need to develop, and I guess that leaves it open for interpretation if you consider the offensive play caller a position i sort of took that to mean a position group but uh what do you make of those remarks from brent venables that they've got a position an area that's clearly defined to brent venables that they need to get better when i first heard these comments my immediate thought was tight end tight end just has to be better with no disrespect meant toward Austin Stogner and Blake Smith and Jason Llewellyn and Caden Helms and Cade McIntyre, that position really hasn't provided you much of anything this year. And it would be reasonable or you could deal with the lack of pass production that you're getting from the tight end group. If the blocking was good or really, really good. Like if it was Braden Willis out there and, and he was blocking, you know, his tail off and, was giving you nothing in the passing game. You, you, you'd trade off. You'd like, you take that trade off a little bit because at least you'd have a good run, run blocker out there. You'd have somebody that was effective in your screen game, but that's just not been the case. You're just not getting much of anything out of the tight end position right now. And upon further thought on that wide receiver is an area I feel like could continue to get better as good as Drake Stoops has been. Jalil Farouk's had some really, really good moments. Nick Anderson has had some really good moments over the last couple of weeks. Wide receivers kind of let you down at times, whether it's a dropped pass by Farouk or Nick Anderson. I feel like each of the last two games, you've had key moments where the wide receiver position kind of let you down. And again, that's kind of growing pains and they're not going to make every catch. It's hard to find a wide receiver that's going to make 100% of the catches on 100% of the targets all the time. But still, you can continue to get better there, and I, but I, but ultimately, I feel like and and even you know defensive line. We've talked about that position over the last few days as well. The defensive line has to get better. But I think ultimately, you cannot. And, and my man Bryant Cruz over at Sooners Wire, we've had this discussion in our little group chat. He says you can't be playing ten on eleven on offense. In a lot of in a lot of circumstances, you're already playing ten on eleven because the quarterback is. You know, not really. I mean, unless you're running with him, which they didn't in the last game, they didn't run Dylan Gabriel very much. You can't have one player not really contributing or being a net negative, as Bryant would call it. So, tight end, it's got to get better. It has to, absolutely has to. Well, that that will roll. I think some of our discussion over the the wide receiver conversation. I would agree with you, though. My my first inclination was he's talking tight end. And actually, if we backtracked a little bit further to the very uh, beginning of the line of questioning, Brent Venables was talking some offensive football too. Uh, I forget exactly what he was saying, but then, you know, putting that puzzle piece with the other puzzle piece kind of, again, makes me feel even stronger that he was talking about tight ends. But I'll entertain arguments for other position groups that he might have been talking about, but just kind of interesting. And I guess the the encouraging thing, if if I can say that, is that Brent Venables and Oklahoma John feel like that uh, they better than than you or I or anybody else out there, and maybe not even better than or this or that. They're confident that they know where this football team needs to improve. And as Coach said, it's not quick enough, not fast enough, really for his liking or your liking or my liking or anybody in Sooner Nation's liking. But they do have a pretty clear idea, right, of where – they need to get better. The uh, the wide receivers, Andrell Anthony obviously has has been lost for the season, and not that it's been you know bad. I mean Drake Stoops had a monster game in, in Bedlam, and yet hey, some plays here or there that leave a little bit to be desired, and some some depth maybe that leaves something to be desired. How much is Oklahoma missing Andrell Anthony? Let's discuss next. Jace Medical, we've told you before, they bring us this episode in part today. Jace Medical, they're going to provide you and your family comfort in times of need to take that wonder and worry away. 
Get yours today, the Jace case from Jace Medical at jacemedical.com. Use our promo code locked on for $20 off. What is the Jace case? Well, it provides five life saving antibiotics for emergency use. And as we always tell you, you just don't want to get caught unprepared, really in life in general. But when it's your health and when it's one of your loved ones, life or their health, you can take no risk. You cannot get caught unprepared. And the Jace case, again, is going to provide five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use. All it takes to get a Jace case is a, well, to fill out a simple online form. And in some cases, just jump on a quick call with one of their board-certified physicians. Again, don't get caught unprepared. Everybody should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones because the unexpected, well, it's just that. It's unexpected. And unfortunately, on occasion, it's going to arrive. So again, get the Jace case. Uh, get on over to jacemedical.com and use our code locked on for $20 off today. The wide receiver position has been a position of strength for the Sooners. They've had really, really good depth. We feel like they're developing some young talent at the position, but since Andrew Anthony went down, it's, it's been kind of hit or miss. It's, you know, you've had some really good moments. You've also had some moments where they've kind of let you down a little bit. How much is the loss of Angela Anthony hurting Oklahoma right now? And and can they start to build and, and overcome that over the final three games? Well, let's let's just drill down on that that first component, or to me, the most Im- important component of it, right? Oklahoma almost had three receivers go for triple digit yards in Bedlam, right? So they got a lot of production in the passing game. And yet it's kind of those three guys for the most part right now, Stoops and, uh, and Farouk and Anderson. So the depth that that's, that's the question for me, how much has been lost for Oklahoma with Andrew Anthony, even just that one extra name, right? The the ability to stretch the field. We saw Nick Anderson, unfortunately, an untimely miss in the throw game for Oklahoma. Andrew Anthony, he was making those types of catches, those tough competitive catches. So I don't know. It's, it's an interesting question, John. I, I wouldn't sit here and tell you that the wide receivers have just totally left Oklahoma wanting. Probably, probably I would tell you that there's other areas for Oklahoma offensively that are of greater concern, but I'll entertain an argument that Oklahoma from just a depth standpoint right now has been pretty, pretty uh, thin, significantly damaged by the loss of Andrew Anthony. So I think of, I think of two plays. I think of the Nick Anderson drop. I also think of the interception where Dylan Gabriel's thrown to double coverage to Brennan Thompson. We've seen Andrew Anthony show a very good, good awareness and good kind of positional awareness, body awareness, body control to be able to come back and get footballs that were quote unquote underthrown. Maybe that's a play where he's able to, you know, play some defensive back and knock the ball down before the defender can intercept it. Maybe he can even come back and get the ball. He's got more size than Brennan Thompson and he's got good jump ball ability. So, you know, those two plays potentially An- Angela Anthony makes. Now, obviously it's not, apples to apples comparisons. You, you don't know what the game's going to give you in those situations, but I will say that they have had a, a bit of a loss of the deep element with Angela Anthony being gone. Now, Nick Anderson's made some plays down the field. Uh, Jalil Farouk's made some plays down the field, but you're not getting as much separation downfield as you would like. And that's what Angela Anthony was providing. And you're absolutely right. The depth has been a bit of an issue. I mean, we we haven't really gotten to see Jaden Gibson much since non-conference play. Brennan Thompson has kind of worked in a little bit as well. So has Jaquay's Petaway at times, but it's it's hit or miss. It's not a consistent rotation at wide receiver. And, and maybe it's because they don't feel great right now about the depth that they have at wide receiver. And and that really highlights how important Angel Anthony was to this team for the first what five, six weeks of the season, seven weeks of the season. Now you got to start to figure out, okay, who are going to be the key contributors down the stretch? I think they can get by with what they've got and their wide receiver rotation as it is, but you would love to see a guy like Jaden Gibson really start to, to take flight and take advantage of some opportunities. A guy like Brennan Thompson take advantage of some opportunities because 
there's a good chance that you're going to see your three starters back next, or you're not going to see Drake Stoops back, but odds are you're going to get Andrew Anthony back. You're going to get Jaleel Farouk back and you're going to get Nick Anderson back. And so if, if Jaden Gibson wants playing time with Oklahoma next year, he's going to have to start showing that he's ready for it. Same with Brennan Thompson. Those two guys are going to have to start showing like, Hey, we are ready to contribute now and are going to be key contributors significant role players in this offense next year as well, because there's a lot of wide receiver talent that hasn't really gotten an opportunity just yet. Jaquez Pedro, Jaquez Pedro, a summer enrollee. And then what's coming in the 2024 recruiting cycle is there's a lot of wide receiver talent between Ivan Carrion and uh, Zion Kearney and Zion Reagans and KJ Daniels and Dozy Azukanma. Like there's a lot of wide receiver talent that's going to be coming to the Sooners. And there's a good chance they could end up getting some transfer portal help as well. So if you want to not only contribute this year, but then to begin to position yourself to be a key contributor on the roster next year, now's the time that Jaden Gibson, Brennan Thompson, and whoever else is on the team needs to step up and see, and say, hey, listen, whatever wide receiver snaps are available, those are going to be mine. And that I want to see Jaden Gibson take that step. I want to see him become that wide receiver four on this team and make, give them an opportunity. You know, we talked about the tight end position being a, a position of weakness right now. If a fourth wide receiver was able to step up and be a significant contributor and show consistency, maybe you could do without a tight end altogether and just play out of 10 personnel with four wide receivers and just put your best athletes out there. But you haven't had enough consistency with your wide receiver four because your depth issues have been there too. Does Oklahoma have in any way, shape, or form a wide receiver problem in your mind? Not not a problem because you've got good players. You know, Nick Anderson is a good player. And Jaleel Farouk, I think, is a good player. We just haven't seen anybody take that transcendent step to becoming a great player yet. You know, we haven't seen somebody go to the C.D. Lamb level. My wife, we were watching Bedlam on Saturday. My wife, you know, Oklahoma alum times two grad degree and all that loves college football. She's like, where's our CD lamb? Who's who's our CD lamb? We don't have a CD lamb on this team. And we don't, the Sooners don't have a CD lamb just yet. You know, can somebody develop into that? Absolutely. But we don't have anybody that's like that great player that teams have to account for. They have to roll coverage their direction, but I think they've got guys that can develop into legit number one wide receivers but they just haven't done that just yet well and basically that's what i was asking right is does oklahoma have a number one wide receiver and i think it's fair to say no, no. right now on this this oklahoma team and they've got they've got a nice little collection of a couple of good wide receivers and andrell anthony obviously was a part of that and losing him definitely has hurt this team and uh, it's taken some of the downfield throw game away, no doubt. Probably the the most reliable downfield piece in the throw game for Oklahoma, right? I mean, I think that's fair to say. Nick Anderson at times has been that guy. But, uh, yeah, they, they haven't really wound up with that number one guy. And I think dating back to the offseason, we weren't particularly concerned about it. We thought somebody, probably Jalil Farouk, was going to be the guy that would develop into it. And, and it just hasn't worked out that way. So, yeah, I would say it's going to be, you know, the rest of the way, let's see what happens here. I would love for Jaden Gibson to show us some growth as well. I'm with you on that. I think we've seen that from Nick Anderson. I'm not going to get super caught up on one untimely drop. Obviously, that's the latest unfortunate uh, piece of it for Nick Anderson. But largely, he's been good, right? He's clearly yeah. taken steps forward. Is he the number one guy right now for Oklahoma? No, I wouldn't put him in that type of category. Could he potentially get there next season? Yeah, I, I think that's a possibility too. But clearly to me where Oklahoma's at, John, is I'd like to see a Jaden Gibson the rest of the way show me that he's capable, potentially capable of getting to that point. I haven't seen that yet from him on a consistent basis. And then beyond that, probably you're waiting until next season whether it's out of the transfer portal, Andrew Anthony getting healthy, or those freshman wide receivers that you're talking about to get that true number one guy. Because right now, though, I think they're pretty good at wide receiver and certainly capable of having won each of these past two games, John. I would not chalk these losses up directly to wide receiver. That's oh, not no. why they've lost. It's, not it's much larger than that. And yet, 
if we're drilling down on wide receiver, I do think it's fair to say they don't have the number one guy right now. And Oklahoma should have a number one guy like that, right? Now, CeeDee Lamb, if your your wife says, hey, where's the CeeDee Lamb? Okay, well, uh, yes, I'd like to have Oklahoma have a CeeDee Lamb every single season, but CeeDee Lamb is spectacular. So probably you're not always going to have a CeeDee Lamb. Most years you'd like to have somebody close to that, yeah. but, uh, you know, if, if that's the bar, and I understand it's Oklahoma, that's a lofty, lofty bar. But I don't know that they've got anybody particularly close to to that level right now, right? Which is sort of what we're discussing. No D.D. Westbrook. I mean, no no Hollywood Brown. No Who's Ryan Broyles. Yeah. Right. And, and that's kind of what I told her. I said, you know, C.D. Lamb is one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. There's not a lot of those growing on trees. Yes, Oklahoma is kind of used to having that, and you you generally bank on them having a guy that could be a first round wide receiver, if not a first round wide receiver, a great college wide receiver. You know, Ryan Broyles wasn't necessarily a great NFL receiver, same with Sterling Shepard, but they were great college wide receivers. You know, they they were fantastic, phenomenal players. It's just not every day you're going to find a CD Lamb just walking around. And some of this, some of this conversation comes back to the failure of development of guys like Jaden Hazelwood and Theo you know Theo Wees and Trajan Bridges and you know that that great you know recruiting class quote unquote great recruiting class I think it was 2019 that was supposed to have these transcendent wide receivers that none of them panned out I mean that's part of this discussion you know these guys would be you know redshirt juniors or seniors at this point for the Sooners and and be key contributors to this team but that's not the case they're having to redevelop their wide receiver depth and that's why they're taking so many wide receivers in the 2024 class is to reestablish that depth that hasn't been there. So speaking of the 2024 recruiting cycle, we got a big time visitor coming up for the Oklahoma Sooners and we'll discuss that next. Bringing us today's program is prize picks. It's the home for the best daily fantasy sports. You can go check them out. Prizepicks.com backslash locked on college where wait for it. Use our code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. I've been uh, telling you that they've got all sorts of cool ways to play the entries. You can submit those in 60 seconds or less. So that part's really nice because you don't have to wait around and take a bunch of time to, to put that entry in. But now with basketball season here, the NBA is in full swing. And that means LeBron James and company are back and they've got their special combo projections across football and basketball. It's in their specials league. It's a league created specifically for these combo projections, such as uh, a couple of players from different sports. We we keep telling you LeBron James plus Travis Kelsey at a 10 and a half combo of three pointers made plus receptions, just more or less, whichever way you like it. And of course uh, for Oklahoma right now going into this week versus uh, West Virginia, more or less Dylan Gabriel, 270, 0.5 uh, passing yards, that's a lot, but uh, I would probably lean the more there for, for Dylan Gabriel, but check it out, prizepicks.com backslash locked on college. Use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100 daily fantasy sports made easy. We are what six weeks away from the early signing period, and the Oklahoma Sooners are trying to close out another top 10 recruiting class in the 2024 cycle. And they're going to have a big time visitor this weekend for West Virginia, Grant Bricks, the number one player out of Iowa, big time offensive guard prospect that Oklahoma has been battling with the Nebraska Cornhuskers, the Kansas state Wildcats, and basically every other school in the Midwest uh, for Grant Bricks services. The latest projections favor the Sooners, but it's still a recruitment that they're going to have to battle for all day long throughout the rest of the cycle you gotta land grant bricks how important is is it for the oklahoma Sooners to land bricks in this cycle i think it's huge i think it's the to me i mean obviously if there's a flip which i don't think there's a flip but if there's a, a defensive line surprise would be tremendous for oklahoma but probably we're not going to be banking on any of that right probably what you've got is what you're going to wind up with and uh which is pretty great part, still which is which is very good defensively yeah. but uh adding grant bricks as one of the offensive linemen to this class it, it's been something i mean i think we've seen it this season with Caden green that you get these blue chip type guys 
John, they can help you very, very quickly. Not always right away. I mean, Caden Green might just be pretty special in that regard, but uh, even he's going to continue to get better. And so Grant Bricks is of that mold, we think, right? And, and if that is indeed true, which I tend to believe that it is true, then landing Grant Bricks is a and, – and Coach Biedenboe at times has been on the developmental train and get somebody out of the transfer portal, and they've done well doing that. But the lifeblood of a program is on – the high school recruiting trail and getting somebody like a Grant Bricks to go along with a Caden Green and stacking that as you go to the SEC where everybody's big, strong, mean, and nasty up front is at a premium for Oklahoma. We keep talking defensive line, defensive line, defensive line. Well, you can flip that conversation to offensive tackles and interior offensive linemen and centers, et cetera, et cetera. They need to get better up front, both sides of the football. So that's a long way to tell you that, yes, I think it's a, a must-get late in this class for Oklahoma. I think it's very, very important. Yeah, I think of everybody else that maybe they're targeting or if they're trying to flip, like, you've got to get this one. You've got to you've got to land it. You've got to be able to stack blue-chip talent at the position year after year after year. You know, the the Jacob Sexton, Jake Taylors, we, we're starting to see a little bit of Jacob Sexton now. Uh, the, the injuries have kind of held them back a little bit, you know, Oklahoma's reluctance to play young guys last year also held back, you know, maybe getting them some playing time in year one, but they've decided to go against that reluctance and start playing young guys. If they're proven to be to be ready and, and available. And Caden green has been an example of that. We've seen it with other examples like Peyton Bowen as well, where true freshmen are able to come in and be significant contributors. Grant Briggs has got the talent to be a guy that could come in and step in and battle for you know, a right guard spot when McCade Mattire goes off, you know, to the NFL or wherever he ends up. This is, this is a huge recruitment because you got to continue to build that guard depth. That has been a bit of a question mark for the Sooners this year as, you know, Savion Bird really didn't take hold of that left guard job. You know, Caleb Schaefer hadn't really turned out to be a, a, a plug and play starter out of the transfer portal. And you're going to lose, you know, Walter Rouse and McKay Mattire and, and maybe even Andrew Rain uh, to, and you're definitely losing Tyler Guyton. So you got to hit on some of these, you know, you know, four-star prospects that you're bringing in and you're not just bank on to being able to develop your three-star guys. You got to get the guys that are talented to begin with guys that, you know, if, if proximity to home wasn't such a big deal to grant bricks, this is, would be a national recruitment with teams like Alabama in, in the fold and you know uh, whoever else. Whoever else wanted to be in on him would be, except proximity is important to this kid. That's why it's Nebraska, Kansas State, and Oklahoma. you got to win this one. You, you just have to. Now, will Oklahoma be able to find good offensive linemen? Absolutely. But how much easier is your job at development when you get a guy with the talent like a guy like Grant Bricks? Also, it's great to be able to recruit in the Midwest, especially offensive linemen, because what have we seen teams like Wisconsin and Iowa? You know, all those Big Ten teams, they find their offensive line success out of the Midwest. So get one of the best players out of the Midwest at the offensive line position at guard, and you're gonna you're gonna thrive and you're gonna prosper. And to be able to package that with Sexton and Taylor and Caden Green and start to develop your offensive line for the SEC. I think it's going to put your foot forward and, and you're going to have a good chance to have an offensive line, maybe not in 2024 that's ready to go and, and be really, really competitive and dominant, but 2025, 2026, as these guys continue to develop and mold together and work together, you should be really, really good. Well, and just in closing on this, I do think in a recruiting race that you are apparently leading, sounds like you're leading, primetime game, hungry fan base, frustrated fan base. If things go well, you've got a chance, I think, to really, really, really impress somebody that apparently you're already leading for to begin with. So the environment itself, I think, could be conducive to maybe, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and commit to Oklahoma this weekend. We'll see. Uh, maybe he's going to ride this thing all the way out. We're getting close to the early signing period. I mean, what? Basically uh, a month away here now, but uh, Oklahoma, I, the fan base, right? Sooner Nation, you got a chance to impress this weekend. And uh, West Virginia gives up, what was it, 139 rushing yards per game, which is 58th in the nation, 4.3 yards per carry. Really, you know, potential opportunity to, uh, 
you know, let your offensive line bulldoze a little bit and maybe uh, run some run some rushing yards up with Toby Walker and Gavin Sawchuk and and really impress a, a guy like Grant Bricks. So, I mean, that's not why you game plan, but good opportunity to maybe uh, get some good rushing totals on the board this weekend against West Virginia. But that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Sooners. Thanks so much for tuning in and being a part of the show. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. We're free and available on all podcast platforms and on YouTube. Hit that notification bell to let you know when new episodes drop. Follow Josh on Twitter at Josh on Ref, myself at John Nine Williams. The show is at Locked On Sooners. But until next time, well, we'll break down our keys to the game for West Virginia. We'll give you our picks of the week as well. He's Josh. I'm John. Boomer Sooner.